All right, hello everybody. This is gonna be a quick tutorial on the two different ways that you can easily connect back to your Synology DSM from anywhere in the world, as long as you have internet access. So the two options you have are both pretty straightforward. You can either use what's called Quick Connect, which really just allows you to go in and get to DSM. It's a little bit slower, but does not require any kind of port forwarding or you can use Synology's free DDNS server. It allows you to create your own web address and simply port forwarding from there. So Quick Connect, the nice thing about it, it does not require any custom router settings, though if you own your own router, they're very simple. But using a DDNS server is actually a lot faster. So depending on what you need to do, you can choose there. Quick Connect will always work for you though, just about, no matter what your network setting is. And it really only slows you down when you're doing big downloads directly from it. So if you're just go going in to check on your server, it's probably the easiest thing to do is just use your Quick Connect. All right, so the way we're gonna start out here is we're going to just go in straight into Control Panel. And for Quick Connect, it's right here. So yeah, it's incredibly easy to do right here. All you have to do is click Enable Quick Connect. You're gonna need a Synology account if you don't have one already. And then just create a Quick Connect ID. And then just simply check box. All right, it's just that simple. If you were to have gone to quickconnect.to slash hi guys, you would have gotten to my homepage and had to sign in. But yeah, it is just that easy. You don't need any port forwarding or any custom settings. Now let's do a more advanced version. And gonna go ahead and use what's called a DDNS server. That stands for something. Basically what's happening here, your Synology is constantly broadcasting what your global IP address of your NAS is to Synology.com. Then, whenever a user goes to whatever your DDNS server name is, .com, it will automatically say, okay, that is this address, and automatically send them to your IP address. This means you don't have to have a static IP address, because anytime your address changes at home, it will automatically update with everything else. It's a really great feature that Synology has, and it's great for things such as WebDAV, which I'll be doing a video on later. So if we go to the top of my browser here and click on this number, we're going to see that it is my local IP address, colon 5000. That's the HTTP port for your Synology. Generally, it's defaulted to 5000. So anytime you type in your global IP address, if your firewall allows the port 5000 through, you will actually get directly to your Synology DSM page. No additional configuration required. However, your ISP, I think to charge people for static IP addresses, will randomly change your IP address throughout the year. This can be something as often as daily to every six months. In my experience, it's totally random. So you never know what your global IP address is and you don't wanna constantly have to be looking it up all the time. So that's why Synology has created a DDNS server. This allows basically your Synology to tell the rest of the world what your global IP address of your house is. This has some security risks, but they're pretty small if you have a good router. If you're going to be doing this, I would make sure to go and check what your router ports open are. Every, do that every six months because you never know when you're opening something up if you should leave it open and you don't want to have holes in your network, especially when people can see into it. To be fair, there are already bots trolling the net right now that are just looking at every single IP address and seeing if it responds back to port 21 to get a response so they can SSH into and do malicious things within the network. But most routers lock that down and actually a lot of routers will not even let you open it up because it's so easy to hack into things. So to set up a DDNS server, simply go into external access Click add, select one of the service providers. So I know for a fact Synology is free and make up your host name. I unfortunately cannot do this because I've already got one configured to my account. But once you've done that, it's really easy to set up. So once you've set that up, now we're going to have to go ahead and open up the ports 5000 and 5001. 
5,000 is used for an unsecure connection. I would not recommend doing that in this day and age. 5001 is used for an HTTPS connection. That is an encrypted traffic. So if you've got anything secure on your NAS, honestly, just use this anyway for anything outside the net. All right, to make sure that we can use HTTPS, we're going to first make sure we've got a certificate. Synology has actually started automatically giving you a certificate for your NAS as soon as you create it and automatically updating it. But let's just go ahead and make sure you've got an encryption certificate. So to do this, we're going to go into settings, security, and go into certificate. And right here, you can see my certificate. So that means I will be able to use HTTPS security. It could give some users an error not to use this, but you can click around it. This is good because even though it's self-signed, we, we ourselves know it's trusted. So the only thing you would really have to worry about is a man in the middle attack on your specific Synology NAS. And I'm gonna go ahead and assume that 99% of us are not important enough to have that elaborative attack for just one person. So having a self-signed certificate for something only you are using is really not that big of a deal. Now that we know we've got a certificate, let's make sure it's used. So we're going to go into network, DSM setting, and say automatically redirect HTTP connections to HTTPS. Basically that says take any unsecured connection and automatically put it to the secured ports. So. One thing to note that I'm going to be doing a little bit differently here is I'm actually going to change my port slightly because I've already got DSM running on my main server using these two ports. So I'm just going to put it at 4000 and 4001. For the rest of this video, if you see 4000 and 4001, assume it's 5000 or 5001. All right, so now let's just apply that. It's going to take a minute because it's currently restarting the web server because we have decided to redirect all of the traffic. All right, so as you can see here, it's got an error because we've currently got a self-signed certificate. I will go over in, a new, in another video how to get a actual certificate from Let's Encrypt, but for now, we're just going to use a self-signed one. So we're gonna to go to show details and then visit the website. Safari is going to be very mad at us. It's even making me type in my password. But this does not matter because nobody can spoof it because nobody really cares if it exists. Someone wants to have a man in the middle attack for me at my Synology. I will take that risk upon myself. All right. And so now we can see in the upper left hand corner, we've got the little lock. That means we're using an HTTPS secure connection. And so we know nobody can steal our data, but we still currently have the problem where nobody can get to our NAS from the outside because my router has automatically blocked the ports I'm using to access this, which are defaulted to 5,000 and 5,001. So to do this, we're going to use the great port forwarding settings on Synology. We're gonna go back into control panel external access, router configuration, and just click set up router. It's going to read through the settings on my router and automatically figure out if it can port forward it itself. And so, and so it passed the test, so we're going to be able to add port forwarding. So now our router is set up, so we can create port forwarding rules. So we're gonna do a built-in application. We're gonna scroll down until, until it says management UI, and that is DSM. So we're going to select both of those. Um, if you want to be extra secure, you can just choose the 4,000 or 5,001. That way, you know you're only going to be getting HTTPS connections. And now, simple as that, we're just gonna click save and it's automatically gonna do the port forwarding rules for us. 
And just like that, we can reach our Synology NAS from anywhere in the world as long as we have an internet connection. Just simply type into your browser this host name right here, colon 5000 or 5001, and it will automatically redirect you to your Synology NAS's page. It's just that simple. All right, thanks for watching. Stay tuned for more videos and subscribe, I guess. Bye.